<laughs> yeah, I got the giggles. Not a good start. No, not a good start today. G'day guys, welcome back to the shed. Today we're back playing with my old Kingswood Ute project and we're going to weld the skin on the bottom of the door. Now it's been a while coming on this one, not because I've been walking around it for any other reason than we just haven't had enough time to do it. So this is not a five minute job. This is a job where you're going to allow yourself a few hours to get yourself prepped up nice, get it all fitting together and then weld it together. We'll try and keep it as short as we can, but we want to keep enough information in there for everybody who wants to attempt this sort of work at home. Now, before you get into it, get yourself in the right mindset. Assess your welding. If you can weld competently, and I mean run a pass a weld for at least three quarters of an inch, 20 millimetres, and not have a great gob of weld sitting on top with no penetration, or not have a big gaping hole in it or something like that, you are then ready to attempt something like this. Now, it's not something to be really scared of. It's just weld, it's just metal. So it will all work if you follow the simple rules. So the first thing is we have got to get our two panels fitting together. So I'll grab the panel that's going on there and I've still got to trim this back a bit yet. So I'll just overlap it for now. So this is a panel we've made. I've made it on the pull max. I've made it on tooling I've made so I know that this line is exactly the same distance from the bottom of the door as what the factory had it. So on this car I'm going to measure this panel from the bottom. If you've bought a replacement panel and you've got any discrepancy at all between this style line on the side of the car and the bottom of the door here, fit this line back to exactly where it was on the panel. So the easiest way to do that is, imagining this is an original panel, take a measurement from this line to anywhere above it and put a little datum line on the panel. Scribe it in there so you know where it is. When you fit your replacement, make sure you've got exactly the same distance. That's what I've done here. I've just simply measured off the bottom of the door and I've got three datum marks on the door. Now, this one's sat around for a while. It's picked up a few little dents and bits and pieces in it. I'm not overly worried by these little car park size dents. If there was damage to the door that would require a bit of filler work that would cover an area like that, I would be looking hard at repairing that first. Anywhere where you've got a dent in the panel, you have changed the way the panel is stressed on the frame. So if we've got a crease through here, and we can show you that very easily. Here's a skin off another door. So this door's been opened right out against the back of the guard and it's got like a crease in it here through there. And it's not very deep and I didn't even know it was in this panel. It's a door I bought and looked a very good door from the picture so I just went ahead and bought it. Once I blasted it, I found this damage in here. If we were trying to weld through here, we're going to get the stresses that are built up in the panel around the weld wanting to run free and release and we're going to get distortion usually into our new panel. So we will put a weld past here and suddenly we're going to have a line appearing in this just because of these stresses in the panel. To solve that, we need to repair these sorts of dents first. These little car park size dents, they're not really going to worry us because the weld is lower down than what this little bit of a crease through the door is. I can't see that causing any problem for our weld. The next big thing is we've got to fit our weld together really well. So when we trim our panel, we don't want any little gaps. So when you think about the possibility of weld shrinkage, if you've got two pieces of metal that are perfectly butted together, when you put the weld in there, you melt the metal, it joins the two pieces together, and you can only have the piece of weld shrinking that's supported by the metal butted on either side of it, and it will stretch the weld out. If you've got even like a small gap, a millimetre, a sixteenth of an inch, something like that, even a thirty second, you've got room for the metal to move. So if you're coming up to a spot where there's a little gap in your join, you put a bit of weld this side of it, that weld shrinks and it drags the metal in everywhere. So what happens then is it drops the door. It'll actually lower the door skin line down. So that's why we want it really nice. So we'll get him set up now. What I've got is because this door skin is the same dimension as the door, I can't sit it over the door. So I'll get a rough measurement on where it needs to be. I'll mark the corners and then I'll grind the little overlap crimp off so that we can actually slide this up to where it needs to be. 
If I grind a little bit too far, it's not going to matter because we've got to weld our replacement piece around the corner and weld it to the door. So we can just fill that little corner anyway, it won't matter. So we'll get into it and make it happen. I've got my datum line here and it was 12 inches to the edge of the door. And when I measured it originally, I set the edge of the rule on the bottom of the door and put the mark in line with the 12. So we've got to come up a fair way yet. And still a bit further. be handy if I had something to mark it with. So. Out there. Just grabbed a couple of scrap pieces of metal to sit on top of my skin so I don't put little dents in it with the vice grips. Still got to come up just a smell on this end. That's pretty good there. And yeah, we've got to come up a bit more on this end. Yeah, what have we done? Because we've repaired this door a fair bit, we're tight on the frame. But if we bump it, we can get it to where we want it to be. So that's just over where we want it. Just the other way. All right, that's good. light from the overhead light is making it a bit hard to see the edge of the rule. And that's pretty good too. So. Check, 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 and check again. So 
So that's just actually a little bit too high off the bottom, so it's got to come back out. Now this is what's going to determine our door gap, so we really want it in the right spot. And that looks pretty much on the money. Yeah, we'll call it. <clears throat> so I like to get a really nice scribe line on here. And I like to check it again after I've done that, just in case I've moved the panel a bit. So that one's good. And that one's good as well. Now I prefer to just cut this and leave a little bit of waste with the angle grinder and then I'll trim it with the snips and then I'll either file it or grind it to get it to work nicely. So we'll just rip it off roughly first and that way we can get close to where we want to be and we'll start snipping him. The fun bit now. I've cut it through all the way through the centre part and on the end here where it's sort of overlapping the frame I've very gingerly gone down. It's nicked through just on the end there but there's a little bit of metal left in there but we can get that off by just twisting it and snapping it off. Right, so that's got that off carefully. There's a very sharp razor, well, razor sharp burr on the back of these, so just be very cautious with that. So I can come back and I'll just trim it now with the snippers, but there is a quite a heavy build up of proof coat on the inside sound deadening. So what I'm gonna do, I'll just use the edge of the cutting disc and just run along there to knock the burr back on the edge underneath it. And then I'm gonna get a trimming knife and just run across there to get rid of this build up of grime there. Cause otherwise it's going to affect the way the snippers work. And it's also going to affect our weld. So we've got to be rid of it. If you try and cut through it, the snippers, because they're coming up to this on the back, it's going to slightly roll the edge as it pulls the metal down against the deadener underneath it and it squashes into it. So very slightly, very hard to notice it, but it'll affect the way it welds together. So we want just a nice, perfect edge. Thank you, Dave. Just using very light pressure and just grinding on the very edge of the disc. But we've got rid of that sharp burr now, so I can scrape the back of it carefully and we can get the proof coating off it. Now for anyone who's come into this series of videos late, 
This is a door that was probably a little bit beyond it for being repaired, but I've, it's the original one for this car that we're playing with. And so I thought from that point of view, we might as well use it. But it's just more to sort of point out that with a little bit of work, you can repair really scruffy doors. So if I was going to be putting this repair patch in here properly now, this would all be blasted, it'd be weld through primed, it'd be well and truly sealed up and it'd be lovely in there. But we're going to get this welded on, we'll get the rest of the skin off and work it that way just for a, a little bit more interest and we'll show you a few more techniques of things we can do. So, a bit of a scrape along the back and we'll get rid of the proof coating and then we'll get it cut to size. It's pretty thick through there. I'm going to persevere and do it this way, working upside down and not being able to see much of what I'm doing, mainly because if I sit this on the trestle and start putting pressure on this edge, I can distort the edge and it's going to change the shape of the door. And what we're trying to do is to keep it preserved as close to the factory shape as possible all the way through, and then there's less problems when it comes time to weld it. Just think, a little over 52 years ago, some GMH employee sprayed that on there. I prefer to use the trimming knife to actually scrape the bulk of this stuff off before I do anything else. Mainly if we got in there with a little clean and strip disc, something like that, you run the risk of getting heat into this area. And this is unsupported at the moment. We don't want to be causing any problems that can, once again, change the shape of the door and affect the way our repair works out. So carefully scrape it, that's the best approach. Can I ask, mm -hmm. are you trying to cut on the line or are you trying to cut just this side of the line? I'm just cutting to the bottom edge of the line and that way if we have to do any adjustments we've got a little bit of meat there to work with but it should be pretty good it's pretty straight just line the tip of the jaw up with the edge of the line squeeze it together One of the benefits of leaving original paint on the panel is it will scribe a nice line through it. If you've got a panel that's got multiple layers of paint, the paint tends to want to shatter around the line. You don't get as nice a finish. So in those situations, it's best to just take the paint off, come back to bare metal. And if you can't afford flash things like Dicom, you can just use permanent marker and just color the little strip in along the edge, put your scribe line into your permanent marker finish, and then you've got a nice line to work to. Just got the little end pieces that I'll just carefully trim with the grinder now.
And just when you think you've cut a nice straight line, we'll put this on and see how we went. Okay, that's not too bad at all. A couple of little spots where it's got a little bit of a woofle in it, so we might just run the grinder along that carefully. What do you call a woofle? Just a tiny little bit in here where it's... Uh, where's one of them? Just there it comes out a little bit. There's a little bit of a high spot there. And there's another one back in here, just there. Yes, I know it's not the recommended use of these discs, but gentle pressure, all we're trying to do is just straighten this edge up. So careful, careful, you're not gonna cause any problems. These panels are actually straight this way. So if we sit a straight edge on it, it's going to be a straight line through there. We've cut it, so it could be out a little bit. But when I'm putting my new piece up, I've got a dip in the middle, it's dropping down, and it's probably just gravity. So yeah, so that's really pretty flat. If we just spring our new panel a little bit, we should be able to get them to sit together. Now that's close enough, I'm gonna go with that. So we've got a tiny little gap in the middle. Could play with it a little bit more, but I think we'll leave it as an example of where we could go, but I can't see any problem with this panel being out of whack because of that. So we'll take the bit of paint off and then we'll get the weld and get into it. Stage. We're at welding stage, Ooh. yep. Yeah, I'm going to put the tack just in from the end a little bit so that we can use it as a pivot point to move things around from. Right, that end lines up pretty good there. Take it off again and put a little bit more curl in it. It's pretty flat through here. It's got to have a little bit of an arc. We'll go backwards to go forwards. How am I going to do that? Just trying to introduce a little bit more curl into the panel. It's a bit flat in the middle. So given the size of it, might be enough just doing it like this. Shrink 
Banker. Give it a little bit too much for now. So it's pretty easy to flatten it back the other way. Right, so it's introduced a bit more curve in it. We should be able to just roll the middle a bit. Also going to grind it a little bit first. Now this last minute on the fly fitting is very important and it'll all make a difference to how well your job goes together. And I don't know how many times I've put the first tack in something and then pulled it apart again because it's looked out and thought, nah, that could do with a little bit more work. And this is one of those cases. What you're going to notice with starting at one end and tacking your way across the door is every time you do a tack, this end here is going to change. And that's because we're heating this piece of metal here, it's expanding, so naturally that end is moving. So I tend to work my way across a panel from one side to the other on these big long welds, and that way we get them butted together. And we just want to feel across the join, close up here now. So we're just feeling across the join to get the two pieces butted together. Now because the heat is dissipating out of this weld now, it's pinching this spot back up in here. So I can just push that together and it'll hold itself there and I can get the next tack in.
now, we'll just wait. This end is closing up. If I put my thumb across it, I can actually feel the two pieces of metal starting to pinch together as it's cooling back here. And that's how much it affects it. If you find this end here is starting to pinch up down this end and wanting to overlap, you need to come back to your last few tacks and hammer them. Dolly underneath, hammer on the top and work the tacks, and that will stretch the piece of metal there and shift your sheet back into the right spot down the end. Yeah. Now we had this little bit of a gap in the middle and I've probably given it a little too much room because it seems to have stopped moving. The heat's gone out of that now, but I can close this up by running a little bit of a hotter weld in the middle and just do a little bit more weld instead of doing a tack and the shrinkage on that will drag the end across. Now I've got this just about closed up here. So that's actually coming together now as we speak. That little spot in here is just butting. So I can get in there and put a couple of tacks in there. Now we've closed that right up, so what I've got to do now is spread this one in here to get our piece of metal to sit back in here. And this end now is butted right up. So what we'll do is grab the hammer and dolly, just work this weld in here a little bit. Just see how we go. We might be just sitting them together, pushing from the other side. There's no real textbook here for this sort of stuff it's all just you've got to continually be looking at what's happening and making minor adjustments all the way along so see I'm surprised you start at one end and go across to the other well that's the easiest way to keep it all straight I would have thought you would have done both ends and then work back towards the middle so yeah. just judging by your other world we can get a couple more in there yet Just got to start doing it and then work out what's happening and follow along from there. So what we'll do is we'll put a bit in here. The other thing, it's a little bit tight here, but if we get a tack in here, let it expand, we can pick this spot up into the right spot there. So if we get in here while that's still hot, we'll push that up just like that and just wait for it to come back together. It's going to get more and more difficult to get my hand further on.
Now, if this was a go for it repair and we're gonna crimp the skin down, I wouldn't even be thinking about crimping this until I get this weld finished. I always leave it open on the bottom or wherever I'm working, just in case I want to slide something in there to work the weld with. And it also allows the panel to move around a little bit because naturally you heat a piece of metal up, it gets bigger, it wants to move. If this is crimped down tight or even spotted to the frame, we're just going to cause other distortion problems. So this end is now cold. I can come back and start welding this end onto an existing tack. I've got a little bit of a high spot just this side of here. We're going to take this skin off. I'm not going to be really worried about welding this last little piece over that rusty bit of frame. So if we can just get him spotted roughly in the right spot, we might leave that for now and do all the weld and come back once the skin's off and weld the last two little pieces. So we've got first little section here. We can weld back onto this tack, that's fine. This one here wants a little bit of a tap, so we'll get the first one done. And I'm going to go with welding, what's that, about 5 eighths of an inch, so 16 millimetres, something like that, at a time. And I'm going to weld one here, and that's a bit hot to be hanging on to, and go ahead, probably up to here, and space them out across the door. So we want to make sure our panels are butted nicely together. And because we've got the two edges sitting together, we've only just got to bump one side or the other to just sort of vibrate it up or down a little bit against the other panel. We can weld a little bit there. Ready? Could be a little bit hotter actually. What? It's just the weld sitting up on top. Like I said, it's quite high on the panel. So we'll see if we can get it to burn into the panel a little bit more than that. So we'll do one about here and see how it looks. Ready? Yeah, that's a nicer weld. It flattens out on the end, rather than this one being a little bit higher there. So we'll just change that setting on the welder a bit. It'll probably even go a little bit hotter. What we want is a weld that goes all the way through the two pieces of steel. So if we can imagine, where's a pencil? So if we've got two pieces of metal, and we've got them butted together like that, we're going to weld from the top, so we're going to naturally get a bumper weld like that. But what we really want is a bumper weld on the bottom as well. We want full penetration. So we're looking for a weld that we're going to have to grind off both sides. And when you think about it, it makes sense. So if we do a weld on two pieces of metal, and it's just on the top and sitting on the top, all welds will shrink from every direction. So not only do they shrink from end to end and get shorter this way, or in on themselves like that, but they're also going to shrink towards the middle from every direction around it. So if our weld is only on one side of the panel and halfway through the steel, it's going to shrink and it's going to pull up and make a V where the weld is. If our weld's on both sides of the piece of metal, as it cools down, this side's pulling back towards the middle, the top side's pulling back towards the middle, the panel stays straight. There you go, that's the biggest secret there is to welding sheet metal. Keep it a secret, don't tell anyone. Come on, you can do it. Doesn't want to play the game, man. Oh, man, 
can be welded. Now we've got a first pass through the panel. We've got our weld sitting on there. It's cooling down across the panel. There will be little lumps and bumps around the welds. That's pretty normal. When you think about it, the weld is going to shrink. It's going to drag the metal in. So it's going to want to lift up the areas between the welds and pull the areas where the welds are. At any point in time, we can go through and hammer these welds and spread them out a bit. But if we just work from one side to the other and we do a consistent weld all the way through the door, the shrinkage is going to be the same here as what it is right beside it, right beside it, right beside it, and the door will come back by itself. So don't panic about a little bit of a bump at this stage because they will come out as we weld. But I've got a little bit down here that's just not wanting to play the game. It's propped on the other panel, and so I'm going to have to work them and get them back a little bit closer to where I want them. spot there doing it too. This first pass is always going to be the trickiest one. Once we start moving on from here, we have more and more stability in the panel because we've got more and more weld. So once you get past this, it should be the scariest part of the whole job. So now we can start working between where we welded it before to get a nice finish on that. Now that was the little spot where I had a little bit of a gap and it's because of the heat I'm using. If I'm hitting the wire on just one side alone, it doesn't have the heat sink on the other side because the panel's not touching. So I blew a little hole there to start and then I worked the trigger, zap, zap, zap to get past that point. So if you want to find yourself in the same situation, don't panic about it. It's not a big deal. Go with this one. One there wants to tap. Now you're going to find you're going to be tapping and welding and tapping and welding at this stage.
tricky to get to. I'm going to get to that one. Might be one of those situations where we use an alternate method. So were you tapping beside where the pry bar was pushing it up? I had the pry bar under the low area, which was in there, and I was tapping this side of the line to get these to shake back together. But it has dropped out again. It's not playing the game. It's springing there. It's not actually touching. It's just um, wanting to two bits of metal that are two different shapes. Hard to see where we're at. Alright, so that's there's the line. So we're just above the line at that point there. Alright, I think that's close enough. Might just leave that in there so I can put a bit of pressure on as I weld. drops out pretty quick. Sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Sneaky Rob. Right, back for pass number three. And that's the spot with the tiny little gap. A little bit out of step there as well.
The spacings are not deliberate. They're just working from where I'd put the tacks originally. There's no set rules on how far apart you have to put them. If you got them consistent all the way across, you could probably nail this down to say, if you wanted to do four passes, you could put them, what would we need? Probably three inches apart and you could mark each one of those and you could come back beside them and then you get it smashed out in three passes. I don't really care because if I do another one or two passes it doesn't really take that long. It gives the heat time to sort of spread out in the panel and move out around and same as every other type of welding. This is cooled down now look I can comfortably hold my hand there. Deb could comfortably hold her hand there. It's not hot on this end anymore but the heat has spread out in the panel. So that's where we can come back and we can just weld straight back into these again. So I think we might just have a break now and we'll come back and continue on. So we've just been stopped for an hour and probably 20 minutes or so. This is as cold as it's ever going to get. Part of it was I was hungry, so we went and had lunch. The other thing is it just goes to show that you don't have to do this as a start to finish in one go. We've taken, gone away, left it, come back, and it's still just how we left it. So we'll continue on. What we've got is tiny little ripples along the side of the weld, and that's where we've got little shrinkages on the welds, not on the bits between it. So as we start welding these spots we haven't done, that'll bring the same shrinkage in as we've got everywhere else, and it's going to flatten the door back out again. So don't panic about little TPs and things. A few of them are going to need a little tap as we go, but we'll just continue on as we were before. Okay, let's run a pass. Now, same thing again, doesn't matter if we start at this end or that end. So just to be different, let's start at this end. Another pass all the way through, the more weld we get along this line, the more stable it becomes. So I've done a few spots where I've gone a little bit longer on the passes, but there's no problem there, it's just flowing through and working all right. And we'll just keep building this up, another couple of goes, and we'll just about have it all welded. So it's a little bit of a mismatch here on the end. Just see if I can pull that around a bit, get it to sit together. So the new panel's a little bit low next to that original tack. So I think I'll come in and just weld six millimetres, quarter of an inch or so back onto the other weld. Now that 
should just about sit down together now. That'll do for now, we'll just let him cool a little bit. See how the other end's feeling. All right. We can get back onto it now, that's not too bad. It's a cold panel, so the heat quickly moves out into the panel. Now where I'm finishing, I weld onto a weld, and where I'm just filling the little gap in between the two, I weld from on top of a weld back onto a weld. Now generally speaking, my welds are gas tight. So it's just a matter of getting these little practices so that you're actually burning onto the old weld that you've already put there, or the tack that you've put there, just to make sure that you get a seal up all the way through. Now in this little piece of weld we started to get a little bit of rust contamination coming up from underneath as I melted the weld pool into it and it was spitting a little bit so breaking the arc I was able to continue my weld without getting the heat right the way through to the underneath side. So we are nearly nearly there. Just give him a few minutes to cool. Now we've got a little bit of distortion in this new panel, not a lot, but it's got a little bit of a flatness in here, that'll come out. Once we grind the weld, that will relieve some of the stresses that the weld's put in there. So I don't really worry too much about hitting them unless I've got a dip like this I've got to work out on the way. It comes back to that whole being in control of what you're doing, watching where you're going, but if you follow these steps, this is a pretty easy job. Got a little mismatch here, not by a lot. That was the one I wanted here. Now I want these two faces to be sitting together exactly, so when I grind it they come back smooth. I think that's the only one. That's fine to go, that's fine to go. All right. We're gonna do most of it. We'll have one little bit left, I think.
Right, eh? Nearly, nearly, nearly there. Just let it cool down because I welded right beside here, but we'll give it oh, a minute, something like that, two minutes, and then we can just um, fill that last little bit in and start grinding it off once it cools down. Now that's weld all the way through. Sometimes it's a bit hard to see a bit you've missed. So it pays to sort of just have a good look along it, but looks like we've got it all on there. Yep. What's the noise when you hear a hiss, but then it, and then it takes up? It's got a little bit of pre-gas and post-gas on this welder. So when you hit the trigger, you get a little burst of gas coming out to displace the air away from the weld and then it starts welding and then when you stop welding the gas continues just before it. So that's the gas out of the cylinder coming right. through there. So it's like if you just sort of run an electrical arc and feed wire into it the air makes the metal burn so you get it all bubbled up and horrible and bubbles in it and all sorts of things. So the gas is basically a flux, it's a shielding gas to keep the oxygen off the weld. Well it makes perfect sense. Well, it's so tempting to do that last little bit, but I think I might just wait a little bit longer, you know? Getting to the point where it's just so exciting. Settle, Robbie. Settle. I know. <laughs> it's a worry, isn't it? I've been waiting a long time to do this panel. We've got a little bit of a high spot where the weld is, but that's going to tap down easily once we've got the stress out of it. And the grinder is a different sort of heat to a weld, so the, the grinding heat sort of spreads out a bit, and it does really help with letting the stresses out of the panel. But we've got no real problems where it's had little car park dents and things in it along this feature line through here. None of that's been an issue for us. So um, no, this will be a good one. So are you going to throw it away? Yeah, it's not good enough to put on our car. No, that's for another door. <laughs> no, this is the door we will be using. Righto. And the crowd went wild. <laughs> okay, that's so cool. Welded through there. We've got the rigidity back in our panel. So it's taken all the wobble out of it. So once that cools down, we will, like I say, have a little bit of distortion, not a lot. It'll need a little bit of tapping around with the hammer, but there's no reason why it couldn't be metal finished from here and you'd wind up with primer sort of stage that you could put a high build primer on it and paint it. I'm not gonna get that fussy with it. I'm of the opinion, if you're going to put a bit of filler in a car, where's the problem with having a little skim over something like this? It's not really going to be cause that much difference to the project. So, we'll get in and give it a, a grind. 3M Cubitron 2 discs. These are great. These ones are a 60 grit disc. It's what I use for the bulk of my grinding automotively. There's a part number on that one there, I think it's the part number for the disc. So if anyone wants them, but ask for them by name, any decent abrasive supplier will know about them. Used to always grind with the air sander. I'm a bit of a convert, I've moved on to the angle grinder. Seems to work very well. We've got no palawa.
starting to lose the edge. I'll just run the snippers around and just trim the edge back a little bit. Not a bad run for one disc to grind all that. We've got this little bit of a high spot here. Dolly spread across the area behind it. Hammer this down, that'll come down piece of cake. But because I'm going to take the skin off, I will do it with it off the door. Not that you have to, it's just that why mess around now when we're going to take the skin off it anyway. So we'll just finish grinding this up very quickly and then we'll have a closer look at it. For the benefit of people who are new to the channel, I've got an old worn out pair of snips I use for trimming the discs. Doing this side of grinding, you're only working on the edge of the disc all the time, so you can just trim it back and trim it back. Once they get too small to go on the grinder, I'll put them on the air sander and I've got smaller backing pads and I wear them right down until they're oh, about that round. It's no good doing this with your good snippers, you're only going to blunt them. If you're crazy enough to get involved with sheet metal, it's going to take, it won't take long, you'll wear out a pair of snips, save them for cutting discs down. Have a look in the jaw there, you can see where the abrasive's been wearing it away. It's got quite a scallop in it in the middle. Don't have to get real worried about getting them super round. They seem to wear out pretty quick on the edge, so they'll come back to being round with rotation. So we've got it welded, we've got it ground, we've got this little bit of a ridge where the weld is in places. We've got a little bit of a hollow on our replacement panel, but the original is actually pretty good for most of the way across. So what I'm going to do now, because I've got that thick band of proof coating on the back, I'm not going to get real carried away with that. But a couple of points to note, I've welded this hot, like I've come in as hot as I dare with the setting on my welder for this thickness material, which is 20 gauge or one millimeter. Um, you can see that it hasn't really burnt the paint. I only ground off about 12 millimeters, half an inch of paint, but because we were doing it into a relatively cold panel, there wasn't enough heat concentrated in one spot to actually travel fast enough to burn the paint. That's what you need to be looking at. Sometimes you can do a colder weld and you'll get more heat into the panel because the weld's sitting on top and not penetrating and you don't get that heat transfer through the sheet. So that's all come up really nice. I am really happy with this. I've done many of these. I don't know how many. On our YouTube channel, the little icon is a little um, HG Holden Brougham, same model as this. It's a brown one as well. All four doors on that car were welded like this. I did the front guards, the wheel arches on it, things like that. There is less than half a tin of filler in the entire car for the entire restoration. So a bit of metal work now, we'll get this really nice. But I'll just give it a quick tap around, show you a few little things, and then we'll call it for this. And when we come back, we can move on to pulling the skin off. So now this is super easy. We're gonna wind up with the proof coat sitting on half the dolly anyway, but we don't need to be belting it, we only really want to tap it. And we're going to put the dolly underneath here. So if we put it on there, we can see how it rocks. So once we've got it underneath, we can support either side of here and work that line down. Now already the ridge is starting to go down. I've brought it down at least by a third just with that little pass. And it's just a matter of keeping an eye on what you're doing, feeling along. There's a little bit of a high spot just there. We can work that area there. So 
So I would say three or four passes like that along the whole length of the door, we'd have that looking pretty good. And like I say, because I'm going to take it off anyway, I'll strip that old proof coat off. We'll metal finish it off the car and I'll show you a bit of that when we come back. The main thing to remember is the only thing we have changed from before when we had the door prepped for the new skin and the new piece of material here is we have put a weld on it. So if you've welded this and you've got distortion here in a line like this, it's no good hitting it here. The problem is with the weld. So if you find that you wind up with a pull line that goes down or across on an angle or into the door, it's because you've got way too much shrinkage on your weld at that point. So that area you've got to stretch out. So that's where you bring the dolly straight up underneath your weld and that's when you can really give it a good sort of a hit on it because we want to spread that shrink out and stretch it out into the panel around it and that will relieve any distortions further out. That just about covers it for today guys. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to go and shoot a will it start now and see how we go with that one. So you'll see that out soon as well. So yeah, stay safe. We'll talk to you soon.